October 2nd, 2018 is now called to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Clerk, would you please take roll? Councilmember Cooper. Here. Councilmember Beaton. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Zielinski. Here. Mayor Smith. Here. Councilmember Grabowski. Here. Councilmember Pontiac. Here. City Manager. Here. City Attorney. Here. DPW Director. Here. Finance Director. Here. Public Safety Director. Here. City Engineer. Here. Thank you. Uh, public hearings, we have none comments on agenda related items. This is an opportunity for citizens that are present to make comments on agenda related items. If you wish to make comments, please come forward, state your name, your address, and limit your comments to five minutes, please. Are there any citizens that wish to make comments? Yes, sir. Good evening. Glenn Zaring, 321 Fifth Street. I uh, was made aware of the fact that we're looking once again at the issue about having dogs on the river walk. Uh, ordinarily, anybody that knows me knows I have a large dog and would walk all over Manistee. So I am definitely a dog lover. But on August 29th, I had an incident where we were walking one of our standard routes and all of a sudden a dog burst through a screen door and attacked us unprovoked, I'm just walking my dog, carrying a bag of doggy do, and uh, this dog attacks. It literally took about one second for that dog to be on us. And uh, we were real busy for a little while. I had a uh, leash wrapped in my, around my legs just about threw me on the ground. Uh, Tucker got a cut on his back. And I got to thinking about that in terms of the river walk. The sidewalk I was on was a normal city sidewalk. The river walk is not real wide, and in some places it's a little bit wider, but realistically, a lot of people are going to have about a three foot leash on their dog. And if you have two people walking the outsides, okay, that puts the dogs pretty much together anyway. The potential for, I think, some serious injuries has to be considered. Uh, having found out firsthand how quickly a leash can get wrapped around your legs, it is quite conceivable that somebody could be knocked into the channel, be injured. Dogs uh, love them dearly, but sometimes some are a little bit aggressive and some are awfully playful. But as a resident of the city, I am concerned about having the dogs on the river walk because of the liability issues. And we can have signs all over the place saying it's your responsibility. If somebody is hurt or injured or a small dog is killed there, um, I'm sure the lawyers would, uh, so we say, contest what we are saying. So I worry about that. And we are a dog-friendly community. We have beaches. We have parks that we can take our dogs. So I think we, are, we have proven that we are a dog-friendly community. But I'm not sure that we need to take the chance of injuring our public relations and our pocketbooks through allowing dogs on the river walk. I just want to share that opinion with you. Thank you very much. Are there any other citizens that wish to make uh, public comments on agenda related items? Good evening, Mick Shemansky, 332 Fifth Street. And uh, again, I wanted to point out that I thought that the, uh, the council did a very good job, a job on a compromise on the Riverwalk issue, because I know it's been contentious for some time. And I thought opening up the Riverwalk to the wide areas that are adjacent to the marina, uh, knowing well that a lot of our leisure boaters also have dogs and it makes sense that they would have a place where they could, you know, disembark from their boat and have a place close by. There's grassy areas, uh, and again, the areas that were uh, addressed for 
dogs does have a, a venue for uh, people to move aside if there was an issue with a dog. Also, again, it, you know, if we're concerned about dogs, then where do you draw the line? I would rather have the dog on the river walk than on river street, right? If, if you're a boater, you're gonna have to take your dog off of the river walk and onto river street so he can do his business. Doesn't make any sense. That's our main street. It has the most people, more people than the river walk on any given day. So again, I'm not a dog owner, uh, but I, I'm looking at it from a, from a logic standpoint. Uh, it makes a lot of sense the way you've written this proposal. I think it, it meets the safety requirements for the city, but it also allows boaters and, and people in Manistee to be able to have uh, an opportunity to uh, walk their dog by the river, enjoy the scenery. Uh, I did see him uh, earlier on, I think it was maybe a year or two ago, that over 125 people signed a petition asking for permission to have their dog on the river walk. I think the issue then was they were looking at the entire river walk, and I do agree that it narrows by the marina going towards the beach, and that would not be an appropriate place because, again, there is no escape except the river. Thank you. Are there any additional citizen comments? If not, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Consent agenda, all agenda items marked with an asterisk are on the consent agenda and considered by the city manager to be routine matters. Prior to approval of the consent agenda, any member of council may have an item from the consent agenda removed and taken up during the regular portion of the meeting. The consent agenda items include approval of minutes, cash balances, revenue and expenses, notification regarding next work session. At this time, council could take action to approve the consent agenda as presented. I'll make the motion. So I have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Zielinski and a second by Council Member Zorowski. Is there any discussion? City Clerk, would you please take roll? Council Member Cooper. Yes. Council Member Beaton. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Zielinski. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Council Member Grabowski. Yes. Council Member Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Unfinished business, we have none. New business, item A, consideration of ordinance 18-09, amending chapter 1020 sidewalk. Amendments to chapter 1024 sidewalk has been subject to numerous discussions by city council and the ordinance committee. At their meeting of September 18, 2018, council directed staff to prepare a revised language to the proposed amendment. The city attorney prepared the attached language as directed by council. <coughs> as an ordinance, two separate readings are required. If this ordinance is introduced this evening, it could be adopted at the next regular meeting. At this time, council could take action to introduce ordinance 18-09, amending chapter 1024 sidewalk. I'll make the motion. I'll second. I have a motion by Council Member Beaton, a second by Council Member Pontiac. Is there any discussion? I have some questions. Sorry about my phone. I thought I shut it off. Um, this has been an issue, the best that I can figure, back to 2012. We've more or less kicked the can down the road and there's been those that want dogs on the boardwalk and those that don't. Um, I know that the Parks Commission on two different occasions sent a recommendation up to council that um, they did not want dogs on the boardwalk. That was their decision not to have dogs on the boardwalk. I have a problem with the policies that we supposedly have in place. And I'd like to read you something I received from the city manager after questioning our policies and wanting to see a copy of it. We don't have a council policy, council resolution, general city policy, or city ordinance that address dogs on the lakefront between the pierheads or on the river walk. Signs were posted. There was never any action taken by the city council. Um, it's, it's just, 
it's very confusing to me how we got to this point, and city staff is trying to look into that and figure out how we got to this point. Now, I've done, I've done a lot of research. Um, the ordinance does not include a leash law. The, leash, the state of Michigan says you have to have your dog on a leash. It does not say how long that leash has to be. Um, the only time, the only thing it refers to is having your dog under control. So I could have a 30-foot leash, and I guess if, it, if he's under control, it's okay. Um, some of the ordinance I've read from other areas over the past couple of days, I'm kind of impressed with the time they spent developing that ordinance and taking into account both sides of the story. And it's been a tough issue in a lot of areas. Um, I'm just not tonight prepared to make a decision with all the things that are hanging out there. I, um, I would like to see the ordinance adopted for all of the things that we haven't addressed in the past at one setting, not just piecemeal it down, pick the uh, boardwalk for one, the beach for another, the between the periods for another. But let's sit down and figure out what's best for our community and what works for the majority of the people. Thank you. I took a look at the ordinances myself and I sent that a, an email. Um, and I do believe the leash part of it is addressed in ordinance 606.05 uh, in our ordinances about dogs having to be on leashes. Uh, and about cleaning up after your dogs. I don't have it in front of me. I'm sorry, I can't pull it up right now. But it, it was in our ordinances. So to me, that gives us a lot of authority to put up signs in certain areas. Um, so I think I would like a further examination of that ordinance. Well, I question our authority. To, I, this has nothing to do with the lease law, but I question our authority to, where does authority lie? Who has the permission to put up the sign? Because city council said and had a discussion and talked about a dog ordinance that from that point on, it was taken upon somebody, I don't know who, to purchase signs, to place them. Um, I was at the council meeting when they discussed this. I wasn't on council, but I was at the council meeting. I remember the discussions. Like I say, I also know the Parks Commission referred their recommendation on two different occasions up to city council. I have a really clear memory of when I was conscious of signs going up on the city in the city because I was still a resident downstate and used to drive up here with my family and our dog um, and we'd go fishing on the pier off of Fifth Avenue and we'd always take our dog out there and so somewhere I think in the late 80s or early 90s there started appearing signs that we weren't allowed to bring our dogs dogs were prohibited on the pier, and I think that's when I started seeing more signs around the city about dogs. So I don't, <laughs> I'm just trying to pinpoint when something may have happened in, um, because I, I understand what Roger's talking about, and it, it is good to know where these things originate, but I'm thinking that it might have been at that time. I you know, I think there's a number of issues here. Y yes, we do have an ordinance uh, that requires uh, people to have a dog on leash when it's off their property. Um, doesn't say how long the leash can be. Can it be three feet? Can it be four feet? Can it be a 25 foot expanding leash? Um, and, and what constitutes control of an animal once, once you're off your property? The, the ordinance further specifies you have to have a means of picking up the waste of the pet uh, and that you're responsible to do that when you're off your own property. Um, I'm, I'm going to speculate that it's been a very long period of time since anyone's been cited, perhaps for a number of reasons. I know when the ordinance was first enacted, uh, I was a resident of the city, and, and the feedback I got was that they, they found that a distasteful ordinance to, uh, to enforce. It uh, shouldn't make any difference. An ordinance is an ordinance. Uh, but we also have an element of time and, uh, and priority uh, it's certainly not a priority for someone to go out and watch everyone that's walking their dog and see what they're doing. I mean, we've got better things to do with the, uh, with the police department. When it comes to the river walk, um, I get lots of feedback. I've been down to, 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 the, to the pickleball players today, and, and it was almost unanimous. The, uh, uh, there was one person in favor of it, but 
uh, the other nine people were, were opposed. I um, had emailed Mr. Taylor and, and told him that there was an article on Up, Up North Live that uh, Mayor Pro Tem showed me that had a quote that I had asked for dogs to be allowed on the river park. And uh, I've asked for no such thing. The, uh, I've asked that uh, it not be allowed and that we go from simple signage and an ordinance that says you have to obey signs that are posted, which was considered to be not enforceable, to something that was enforceable, and uh, you know, bicycles and skateboards and, and rollerblades. When, when you get during the peak tourist season, there's a lot of traffic on that river walk. I've seen people struggle to control their animals down there. The, uh, I've seen people leave the river walk uh, that were walking on it or jogging on it because in, in the distance they saw large dogs uh, that were being walked on there and they didn't want to encounter them. Um, I'm, I'm still in the same position. Uh, I think we've always accommodated voters that have come in that, uh, that bring their, their dogs with them. There's no prohibition for them to take the dog off the boat and, uh, and get across the river walk uh, to the grassy areas or take them to the dog park uh, or, or walk them down the street on the sidewalk, I mean, that, that really hasn't been an issue. Uh, the feeling that, that I get, you know, where people is make the accusation that we're not a dog-friendly community, and it's like there are a few places, and I think that are places out of concern for safety uh, and where large numbers of people uh, congregate that we don't allow dogs. We've even, even allowed them uh, down, down on the beach in certain areas. I'm, I'm kind of left in, in the dilemma. The majority of the people, the vast majority, with the exception of one, has, uh, has asked me to stand fast on not allowing dogs on the riverway. I have a question for Mr. Saylor. Um, is your liability going to be any different if you're walking your dog on a, on a sidewalk? I don't see a great risk of liability on this issue. I think the other discussions are more relevant. Uh, governmental immunity is going to protect the city uh, if uh, uh, there's some sort of claim that we allow dogs on the river walk and a dog bit somebody or bit another animal. Um, I, I don't see a great liability risk for the city. Okay. And I, and just in follow up, I did pose that question to our insurance carrier Meadowbrook, and they had the same response: uh, allowing dogs on the river walk does not increase the city's liability. Thank you. So it would be up to the guy getting bit and the, and the dog owner to fight it out then? That, that'd be correct, yes. So I'm with Jim. I, I don't want to see dogs on. I've got three letters up here for people against dogs on a river walk. I have a dog, and I don't take him down. There. I don't think, I mean, I've almost been bit myself, so I know what I'm talking about. And that's not fun to look at a big dog's mouth coming at you. So I'm taking him down. I'm kind of a, I don't like rules. I'm kind of a rebel, I guess. I would just as soon do my own thing. But rules or, or ordinances that are we don't enforce, do I want to be spending my time working on an ordinance that in reality might not never get enforced or rarely get enforced? And that comes from the feedback that I had here in council that it's, a, it's not a high priority. We will do it when we have an opportunity. Um, so what does that really mean? Does that mean once a month? once a week, every day, um, when I have time. Um, if we're going to work on an ordinance and we're going to pass an ordinance, then I would expect that that ordinance be enforced. Now, a lot of people will just, because it's an ordinance, will just, will just do that, will follow that ordinance and do their best to comply. The people we're dealing with are those that don't. And when, when people don't follow the ordinance, that's who we hear from. Um, I heard from a person who said, you don't allow dogs on the beach, but when they had beach cleanup day, there was a dog down there. I mean, I, I'm just I'm just telling you though that what we hear. Um, again, I'm going to go back that I I think that these these are issues that there's a beach issue, there's a between the pier heads issue, there's a boardwalk issue, there's a leash issue. All of these things need to be sat down discussed and talked about in an ordinance developed to meet the needs. Um, and we definitely need input from the taxpayer, from the community. Um, 
on any given day, I may hear from five people on one side and five people on the other, and five people who just don't care. Um, so I work, for the, I work for the taxpayer. I need to hear from the taxpayer. What are their desires and what do they want? And not just those on one side or those so much on the other side, but from everybody. What are your wishes? What do you want me to do? So I've heard um, from a lot of the families, the young families, and um, a lot of them are wanting songs on the river walk. And I think this ordinance gives both um, people that want dogs on the river walk and people that don't want dogs. So you have half and half. Um, so you get to the point where you see a dog, well, you know they're allowed there, so you can walk around them. Um, the dog owner, they need to know, okay, you can't go a certain point, then they need to stop and turn around. Um, but I'm, I worry that this ordinance isn't going to be followed. Um, once you get the dogs on that river walk, are they going to be picking, or the owners going to pick up the, the droppings? Are they going to stay on that part? That's what I'm worried about. Um, and then also, you get those dogs that are aggressive and not only someone being knocked over in the water, but you have strollers, you have babies, you have those, so I'm back and forth. But I think to try it out, we need to try and see, is this gonna work? And then revisit it if it doesn't. Well, uh, are you done? Okay. I, I've, I've thought about that also. And we're, we're coming into our winter time when the boardwalk is used very little. Um, it gives us an opportunity if council so desires to sit down and hash this out either by an ad hoc committee or council itself. I prefer to see council do it. I prefer council to, to have a, a meeting, um, invite people, uh, and let's sit down and hash it out and see what we really want to do. Um, just my opinion. Well, I was on the ordinance committee that this was thrown at, and we agreed upstairs what to do, and that was not to allow them. Now we're still, two months later, we're still discussing the same thing that we agreed to two months ago. Yes, sir, and we've been discussing it since 2012, as far back as I can go. Um, I talked with the chair of the, or was the chair of the Parks Commission tonight. Um, they've been talking about it in the Parks Commission for quite some time. Um, well, we know that the dogs have got to be on a leash. Uh, the problem is if the leash is not allowed full feet, uh, never going to solve that. So if people don't keep them close to them, so I, I think we should just vote on it and be done with it. Well, I just don't see the difference between people walking their dogs on the sidewalks in the city and having them go out 12 feet on their expandable leashes compared to the river walk. I mean, you're either a responsible dog owner or you're not. I would agree with that. Um, and I do agree with Aaron that I like the idea of at least allowing part of the river walk that's really wide to be utilized in, in, uh, for dog walking. The DDA wanted this. The DDA came to us, when, and Tyler presented it, see the DDA was very much in favor of opening up that part of the river walk. They thought it was really important to them. Now I know that they don't have a DDA director at the moment, but that was their desire earlier this year. And I, my guess is those restaurant people uh, that were behind it probably have not changed their mind. It would be good maybe to ask them again, but I'm not sure why they would change their mind. They were pretty adamant about trying to get that ha to happen. I'm so I'm D in favor of opening it up partially. The I'm way on the DDA happened. board. Uh, and, and I posed the question that you asked in the last meeting to the DDA um, about their support um, of it. And, and they lost interest in it. They were no longer willing to support it for its bags and containers. Uh, in any effort from the DDA. That, that's, that was just the, the majority opinion. Is there any further discussion? I just want to say that I'm neither for it or against it at this point. Um, I think that, that we're, we have an opportunity to quit kicking the can down the road and resolve this, this winter. Um, I would like to see that happen. Any further discussion? City Clerk, would you please take a roll? Councilmember Pontiac? Yes. Councilmember Grabowski? No. Mayor Smith? No. Mayor Pro Tem Zielinski? No. Councilmember Beaton? No. I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> Not yes. Councilmember Cooper? No. Motion failed. Thank you.
Item B, consideration of adopting a lower pension multiplier for new hires in the IAFF. Recently ratified International Association of Firefighters 2018-2022 contract included a provision that lowered the multiplier for the defined benefit pension plan for new hires from 2.8% to 2.25%. In order to implement this change, council must pass an adoption agreement for the change defined for the change benefit provision. At this time, council could take action to approve a NEARS defined benefit plan adoption agreement lowering the multiplier for new hires in the IAFF from 2.8% to 2.25%. I'll make the motion. Second. I have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky, a second by Council Member Cooper. Is there any discussion? I'm kind of curious is, is mm, why, I mean, we adopted the contract. What, what provision requires us to make a motion to, to change this multiplier for the one group? I think it's a MERS requirement, is my understanding. Requirement from? MERS. MERS. Right. Okay. Any other questions or comments? City Clerk, would you please take roll? Council Member Cooper? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Zielinski? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Council Member Grabowski? Yes. Council Member Pontiac? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Item C, consideration of the contract for engineer of record services, the Spicer Group. The Spicer Group has served as the city's engineer of record since October 1, 2013 and their agreement is set to expire on October 1, 2018. The Spicer Group is interested in continuing in that capacity for an additional five years. The contract has been prepared. The city attorney has reviewed and approved the contract document. At this time, council could take action to approve a new five-year service agreement with the Spicer Group to serve as the city's engineer of record. I'll make the motion. Second. I have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky and a second by Council Member Cooper. Is there any discussion? Yes. You know, I was all set uh, 100% to vote on this tonight in favor of it, and I still really am. It's just that I have questions on conflict of interest, which is in paragraph eight. Um, I want to be clear that if Spicer Group is representing the city, that when they are contracting outside the city limits, that it has to be understood and maybe there m needs to be a memo of understanding between themselves and whoever they are contracting with outside the city, that they represent the city first, that that is their priority. And I'm not sure that that's really spelled out there in paragraph eight, and I would like Mr. Saylor to make some comments on that. A little, a little background first, if you don't mind. Um, we've had those discussions with Sean Middleton when he's been asked to be engaged by someone either in the city, as an example, to do a site plan or, or something like that, or in this case, um, and we talked about it, and uh, we had a good discussion. We thought it was ethical. We didn't think that it was, that it was gonna be counterproductive to the city's needs and I, I'm firmly of the opinion that Spicer understands that we're the top priority. Mr. Saylor, what, what, is, what is your take on Well, uh, um, looking at the contract in paragraph three, it identifies when there is a conflict of interest in the obligations that Spicer would have. And if you look at the final paragraph, and the, and the obligations includes informing the city of the potential conflict of interest. The very last paragraph of Section 8 uh, indicates that if the city determines that the conflict of interest of the engineer, uh, that there is a conflict of interest, the engineer will not perform the requested services from the neighboring township or private development. So basically, it's the city gets to make the call if there's a potential conflict of whether or not it um, has an opposition to Spicer handling that matter. If you don't mind, I'd like to just add to what uh, the city manager said. Every time that they enter in, into a private contract uh, that involves any of our infrastructure, we do have those conversations internally with staff 
Um, Spicer will bring it forward to us. We'll discuss it internally and then come back and, and discuss it with them. And I don't know if there's been an instance where you haven't done work, but certainly those conversations have happened every time. And and do they have to, do, does Spicer have that same conversation with any developer who wants to uh, hook up to say services within the city so that they understand that Spicer's loyalty really is to the city? Yes, definitely, and I think at a cost to sometimes the work we do for developers. Um, if, if just to start out, I will definitely say that if staff or the council feels that we have a conflict, we will absolutely cut that contract and not do that work. I mean, that is our priority is to the city. I want to make that on the record and clear. But besides that, when we, when we typically work with a developer, <coughs> We say, hey, we represent, we represent the, the city, we're engineer of record, and typically we would review it. A lot of times those, those duties get passed on to somebody else, like Jeff, to do those reviews, and so we kind of separate from that portion. And it's, usually it's a pro or a con with our, with, with our developers. Sometimes we're like, well, that's great, because we want to build it to city standards, we know you understand city standards and what the city wants, and so they see it as a benefit. If a developer doesn't want to build it by the book and they want to try and cut corners, then they really shouldn't be hiring Spice Group. I mean, that's, it's that simple. They're going to get a city, a, a quality city project from us, whatever that cost is. And so it's a tough spot to be in. I wish that we could just work for the city solely and our company could survive in this county with just that work. Um, we'd be you know, happy to do it. That's just, it doesn't work that way. If we want to grow our company, hire people from the area and kind of continue to, to grow in this community, we need to do work outside the city limits. So it's a, it's a tricky thing we're, we get involved with. We definitely have the discussions and, you know, we're, we're open to, if somebody feels it's a problem, we will cut that in, in a heartbeat. Well, I, I appreciate that. And I figured you'd say something along those lines. We've worked with you a number of years and, and I do like the work that Spicer has done for us. Um, I just want to make it clear that that that's where we stand because we do have residents that are going to worry about that, particularly when we go forward and talk about the Dunes project. And I think it's great that we would add water and sewer um, users onto our system, but of course there are, there are members of this community that have raised some concerns about that. And um, we'll probably be addressing that when we talk about the next, uh, about the Dunes later on in the agenda. But I wanted to make clear before I voted on this where you stood, where Spicer Group stands, as far as representing the city. John, what is the price of this contract? Uh, it's uh, it's twelve hundred dollars a month is our um, a monthly fee for us to attend. You know, council meetings, staff meetings. We answer a lot of questions, general consulting. That is two hundred dollars more per month than it was in our last five year contract. Over that five-year period, we never have an adjustment. So we've, uh, you've kind of caught up over a five-year period, in our opinion. So we're, we are requesting uh, to increase our contract from $1,000 a month to $1,200 a month. And then our projects are just on a, we do a, we do a project by project basis, um, based on how much the construction is and what our role is, if we're doing design work, construction work. So, but the day-to-day -day engineer record is $1,200 a month. Any other questions? Um, Mr. Taylor, I believe that we do have an option in the contract that allows us to bid out, to bid a job out other than Spicer if we want to. We could. If we wanted to. If we wanted yeah. to. Any other comments or questions? City Clerk, would you please take the roll? Council Member Cooper. Yes. Council Member Beaton. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Zielinski. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Councilmember Grabowski. Yes. Councilmember Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Item D, consideration of the extension and conveyance of infrastructure for the dunes at the Lake Michigan Del development. Ryan Kizikowski has requested council approve, approval for his request to the city to accept the water 
and wastewater infrastructure he intends to construct to support his proposed residential development on property located in Manistee Township that abuts the northern boundary of the city. Additionally, he is requesting approval to connect the city's water and wastewater system. Staff recommends that approval be conditioned on the developer meeting the standards outlined in the attached memorandum. At this time, council could take action to approve the request in concept and require Mr. Kieskowski to meet the conditions stipulated by Department of Public Works Director Jeff Petula to receive final approval. I'll make the motion. I'll second. I have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Zielinski and a second by Council Member Grabowski. Uh, is there a discussion? Is there? <laughs> Mr. Kieskowski is at the podium. Okay. Brian, what would you like to say? I just came up here to answer any questions that okay. you might have. I think your motion, or what's in here, pretty much states what I'm asking for. Um, is is it? We have other backup documentation that comes with our agenda packet that's also available to the public. It says in a memorandum that um, you want to connect at uh, the end of Washington Street. That's incorrect. The, our current design that we have right now is going to is asking to connect at the end of Dunes Drive. If by connecting at the end of Dunes Drive, uh, it would be a complete gravity-fed sewer system. If we went to Washington Street, it, we'd have to put a lift station in, which of course, if we put a lift station in, that would be, that would be an expense to the city to maintain over time. So the preferred way to go would be to, to connect to Dunes Drive. Of course, in our calculations and everything in our water and sewer permit, all that is in there. The MDEQ has to approve this permit, so they're kind of like the third party that is out there that is looking at all this to make sure that the calculations are correct and that uh, the sewer system from Dunes Drive would be able to accommodate that. So also, the city would have to approve that. Is that correct? Well, the, the city, we're, that's what we are asking for, is for this the uh, city for the city to. Um, uh, grant us permission to connect to water and sewer. The, uh, the infrastructure that's going to be put in, that we are putting in, is all going to be built to city water and sewer standards. I guess I'm confused because I thought could, we were voting on a concept. Could, could it, that's you are. That we the staff has no information right now as to the uh, what is the preferred point of contact or contact or uh, connection. Uh, we don't have any of that. Uh, what's before the council right now is just conceptually, are you in favor or not in favor of allowing a developer to put in infrastructure that meets our standards and that can be permitted uh, by the state, by DEQ, and connected to our system? That's it. I mean, well, that's all we're looking for. Do you, and then as the conditions I outlined, there's other things that are gonna have to be vetted and then brought back to council for a final determination. And, and we're looking at uh, a part 41 um, permit for the extension of sanitary sewer systems, a part 399 permit for the water mains. The, the infrastructure has to be designed to our standards um, the city has to review and approve the design of the infrastructure, testing the infrastructure, and ensuring construction compliance. Uh, developer would have to be responsible for all design and construction costs, and the developer has to provide all inspection reports, engineering certifications, testing reports, as-built drawings, and easements. So there's a lot of work to do yet. We just wanted to see if council was even interested in that concept of allowing uh, a developer from outside the community to connect to our systems. And we do have an agreement in place um, with, with Manistee Township, it's for the water that you know we can, ex we can expand our presence in the township and we're working on a sewer agreement, finalizing that, that would be similar in concept. So things are in place, but we have to, the big thing is that it has to be approved by our staff and our engineering firm, the design and construction, and then we have to get 
the developer is going to have to get the proper permits. And then council is going to have to approve it again anyway. And then we'd have to come back and say, we've checked all the boxes, and what do you want to do? What's the, uh, Mr. Matulo, while you're up here, uh, what's the capacity we have to pump water? And I'm, I'm assuming the water tower down there would be the primary source, but we get water from different wells and that sort of stuff. What, what's our capacity? <clears throat> so there's two different things here. There's the uh, public water and then the sanitary sewer. The public water, we've got mains that extend down Dunes Drive to the very north end. Then they travel through an existing utility easement to the uh, strip of land that the city owns that abuts uh, this development and then turns east to the water tower so it creates a loop. Um, we've got plenty of capacity at that location. Um, on a five-year basis, the city does a reliability or a general study that confirms to the DEQ that with all the customers and demand that we have, that we've got sufficient storage and pumping capacity um, and what's called firm capacity. So they take what's available from our wells. We have to take the largest one out of surface, and then we ha still have to meet all peak demands. Um, on the water side, we've got plenty of water, and there's no concerns whatsoever with that. On the sanitary sewer side, and I know that there's been some residents that have asked questions. So there's actually two, two potential sewer connections that they can look at. One is at the north end of Washington and the other is at the north end of Dunes Drive. Um, as Mr. Kieszkowski stated, if they t were able to tie in at the end of Dunes Drive, it would save them from putting in a lift station, saves the developer upfront costs, but it saves us legacy costs for maintenance and replacement in the future. Regardless of where they tie in, either at north ends of those roads, the sewer down Washington turns west on North Goloszewski and connects with the sewer on Dunes Drive regardless. And then that flows down to the industrial pump station. Um, that pump station was just upgraded and rehabbed about three years ago. So it is in, it's doing everything that we need it to do. There's no concerns with its operation. Um, I have looked at some of the engineers preliminary numbers and we don't see any issues with uh, the additional capacity that the, this would place on that pump station. Um, as the city manager said, when we get those designs, we'll go through them and vet those out through our, with the engineers. And then once the city approves of uh, the plans and specifications, the state goes through it with a fine tooth comb after that. And as far as at the treatment plant, we've got uh, at least 30% capacity that's unused at this point. And with the work that we're doing to remove I and I, it, that actually should increase in the future. If we, the, I'm just tossing this out there. Um, if we go ahead and, and do this um, agreement with um, the developer for the 72 units, does that prohibit us from making some expansions in the city and, and adding some, let's just say another apartment building with 42 units or Maybe a couple of apartment buildings with 42 units. Would that with, have? With the level of flow that this would put on our system, it, it only takes up a very, very small increment of what's left over in our capacity. So we've got plenty of capacity to serve all the vacant parcels in town and then additional stuff in the townships as well. Um, unless we got some huge you know, water user or sewer discharger, um, but under normal flows, we've got plenty of capacity left. Is there any way to make sure that all the charges um, properly belong to the developer side and all the charges for the city residents just belong to the city residents? You, do you see, foresee any time where the city residents in, in total would have to be paying for improvements to infrastructure for the benefit of this development? The, so I'll break that down into two different costs. One is the, uh, the capital cost. So the capital cost of, of installing the infrastructure will be the responsibility of the developer. Capital cost to upgrade those uh, pipelines and facilities will then be bore by the utility users. So it's not necessarily a, a taxpayer, but the water and sewer users on, in our system. Um, so it's all of our water and sewer users in our system. Correct. Would be paying for that maintenance. Correct, and the rate study that we did several years ago also puts a, a premium cost on those out of, out of city 
customers um, because they have put less into the water and sewer system than the in-city customers. So that's already been balanced out. Um, okay, so with, their with, rates are higher, basically. Their rates are yes. higher. Yes, okay. yep. And then the, um, the facilities that, according to the city's design standards, these facilities, the pipelines, have a 50-year design life to them. Um, if there was a pump station, certainly that would take, you know, the, the life expectancy of some of those components are less than that 50 years, but the pipelines themselves um, shouldn't have to have any major capital improvements for a very, very long time. The normal maintenance and operation um, is something that we'll have to absorb within the water and sewer departments. Um, you guys know that we are just flushing our, uh, hydrants. We do that in the spring and fall. These would add additional hydrants to flush and we would just absorb those incrementally. Um, the sewer mains, they're gonna be brand new sewer mains, but there's still uh, checks that we do um, you know, to make sure that there's no, no clogging and the sewers don't have to be cleaned. But again, because this is newer, newer pipes, that the incremental cost is very small. And, and it's offset by the additional user fees that we'll collect. If, a list, if it turned out that it would be better to have a lift station built at the end of Washington Street, um, how does that benefit or not benefit the city and vice versa for the, for the developer? Just walk me through that. Um, it's really just a product of, of the design. It's kind of like Filer Township. You know, they just uh, have completed the, the construction of their system, and you always try to design them without pumps and electric, electrical use. Gravity is just a, a much more cost-effective and less expensive way to convey sewage. Um, if it does, there'll be some, some monthly electrical cost to operate it. Um, we've got 13 pump stations in our system now. We do monthly checks on all of them. Um, this station would have to be designed and built to our current standards. So, um, you know, usually the earliest thing that you have to replace and maintain would be the pumps themselves, and that's probably a 10 to 15 year life, and you're maybe talking $10,000 to do that. So um, it adds a little bit um, to us now, and so we would prefer not to have a pump station, but it's not uncommon you know, for those to be installed. So what you're saying is we'll be collecting money from the, from the user, which will go to our enterprise fund for 10 years, and there should be enough accumulated then to replace a pump if we have to, right? Absolutely. There's 72 total units, which it comprises of 15 lots along Lake Michigan, 10 cottages, and then 26, um, 26 duplexes. So. If you connect at the end of Dunes Drive, do you have to traverse any personal property on that side? Uh, there's one lot, which is lot 18, that is owned, I, there, by Mr. and Mrs. Rubeck, uh, but that lot has an easement in it. It's a non-buildable lot reserved for public utilities. Um, so we'd have to come across that lot, uh, the north end of that lot to turn into Dunes Drive. So, and you would have no objection to maybe writing an agreement with them to, to do that? Well, we'd have to come into some agreement with them as far as to get permission to come across their property, even though there's a, an easement already in place, the proper thing to do would be to, to, and I've already spoken with them, but the proper thing to do is to keep them informed and to let them know what's going on and make sure that they're on board with that, so. And if I could just add in our plan review, make sure that all the proper easements and conveyances are in place. So. I, I think it would be really advisable to reach out to that property owner just to make sure that it goes smoothly. I've, I've, already, I've already spoken with them. I'm so. playing catch up. I, I mean, I really became aware of this at about 10 to 5 tonight. So. I mean, as, as I told them, this is still a dream, so I'm basically chasing a dream right now. There's a lot of permits and everything else like that that needs to go in, into all this. So. Once we have all the permits and everything like that, and we're able to actually stick a shovel in the ground, you know, <laughs> but at this point, I told them I'll keep them apprised of what's going on as I keep jumping over, you know, one step at a time. Do you have a target date? 
I think a realistic target date would probably be spring of 2019. It just depends on how long it takes to get necessary permits and stuff like that. Because there's a water permit, a sewer permit. Um, so, you know, I think we set a goal that hopefully we would have our water and sewer permit by December 1st was, was a goal. So obviously with, you know, there being snow here in northern Michigan and the ground <coughs> being froze, there's not like there's going to be a whole lot of work that's going to go in place during January, February. But it would be nice to have everything in place so as soon as March rolls around, we could actually start doing some work. Thank you. Mr. Taylor, it, it would be really advantageous, I think, if you could reach out to this homeowner and talk to them on the phone and just kind of make We'll sure make sure that, that, the, that if that's the point that we're going to connect or we think we're going to connect, mm -hmm. that they'll be spoken with and kept apprised of the situation. It won't catch them unawares. Well, yeah, I, but since they, they're not here tonight, <coughs> they couldn't be here tonight, but since they did send that email and they did send a letter, um, I, I think it's a good idea for you to reach out. That's, that's my advice. Okay. okay. Further questions or comments? City Clerk, would you please take the roll? Councilmember Pontiac. Yes. Councilmember Grabowski. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Zielinski. Yes. Councilmember Beaton. Yes. Councilmember Cooper. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Item E, consideration of booze, beer, brews, and brats event. The Downtown Development Authority recently decided to cancel their annual booze, brews, and brats event. Manistee Elks Lodge number 250 has decided to pick up this event and is requesting authorization. The event will be held on Saturday, October 27, 2018 from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. on River Street, <coughs> Oak Street to Pine Street. River Street closure has been requested between Oak and Pine Streets. At this time, council could take action to support and approve the request from the Manistee Elks Club number 250 to hold the booze, brews, and brats event on Saturday, October 27, 2018, subject to appropriate department approvals. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. I have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Zielinski and a second by Council Member Beaton. Is there any discussion? City Clerk, would you please take the roll? Councilmember Cooper. Yes. Councilmember Beaton. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Zielinski. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Councilmember Grabowski. Yes. Councilmember Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Item F, consideration of application of the boards and commissions. <coughs> the city clerk has taken action to advertise vacancies on the Compensation Commission, Harbor Commission, Historic District Commission, Oil and Gas Investment Board, PEG Commission, Planning Commission, and the Zoning Boards of Board of Appeals. Mayoral appointments require a motion and a second, and council voted support. Nominations for council appointments do not require a second. After all nominations are made, council votes on the non on nominees until one nominee receives majority support. The following applications have been received. Compensation Commission, one vacancy, term ending 9-30-2023. Applicant must be a registered voter in the city. His mayoral appointment, I would appoint Ron Wilson, 216 First Avenue. I'll support the mayor's appointment. Is there a second? I have support by Mayor Pro Tem Zielinski and second by Council Member Cooper. Please take roll. Council Member Cooper. Yes. Council Member Beaton. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Zielinski. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Council Member Grabowski. Yes. Council Member Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Harbor Commission. There are three vacancies, term ending 10 31 2021. Two members can be non residents but must own real estate or business or profession having a licensed business location in the city. This is a 
council appointment. We have Fritz Bohm, 1200 Cutter Ridge Drive, and we have Glenn C. Zaring, 321 Fifth Street. Both are incumbents. I'll make a motion to appoint Fritz Bohm. I have a second. I have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Belinsky and a second by Council Member Grabowski. Please take roll. Council Member Cooper. Yes. Council Member Beaton. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky. Yes. Mayor Smith. Yes. Council Member Grabowski. Yes. Council Member Pontiac. Yes. Nomination approved. I'll make a motion to appoint Glenn Zering. I second it. Okay. I have a motion by Council Member uh, Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky for uh, Glenn C. Zaring. Uh, please take roll. Council Member Cooper? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Council Member Gabowski? Yes. Council Member Pontiac? Yes. Nomination approved. Thank you. Historic District Commission, one vacancy, term ending 228, 2021. One member is desired who meets professional qualification standards for art geologist, architect, architectural historian, historian, or historic architect. Applicants must be city residents. This is a city council appointment. I, I make appointment to appoint William R. Connor, 732 Harbor Drive. Okay. I second. M Mayor, just so we're clear, the council appointments, um, there's a nomination of a candidate. There's no second required. Okay. And then gotcha. after all gotcha. the nominations are in, you vote on the particular candidate. Then. I'd like to nominate Ron Wilson, 216 First Avenue. Okay, as we vote on this, we'll vote by name. Uh, City Clerk, would you please take roll? Council Member Cooper? Yes. No, nope, you need to give me a name. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, William Connor, 732 Harbor Drive. Council Member Beaton? Ron Wilson, 216 First Avenue. Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky? William Connor, 732 Harbor Drive. Mayor Smith. William Connor. Councilmember Grabowski. William Connor, 732 Harbor Drive. Councilmember Pontiac. William Connor. Thank you. William Connor. Oil and Gas Investment Board. One vacancy, term ending 6-30-22. This is a mayoral appointment. I would appoint Jeffrey R. Rao, 294 River Street. I'll support the appointment. I have supported a second. I second it. I have motion by Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky, support by Councilmember Grabowski. Any discussion? Please take roll. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Councilmember Grabowski? Yes. Councilmember Pontiac? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Planning Commission, one vacancy, term ending 10 30 21. Applicants must be city residents, mayoral appointment. Rachel Shelley Thomas, 367 Lighthouse Way South. I nominate Ms. Thomas. I'll make a motion to nominate Michelle Shelley Thomas, 367 Lighthouse Way South. Okay. Good planning. I'll second. I have a motion by Council Member Beaton, a second by Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky. Any discussion? Please take roll. Council Member Pontiac? Yes. Council Member Grabowski? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Cooper. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Communications and announcements. Uh, concerns and comments. Citizen comments. This is an opportunity for citizens to comment on municipal services, activities, or areas of city involvement. Citizens in attendance shall be recognized by the mayor for comments. Please limit to five minutes. Letters submitted to council will not be publicly read. 
Are there any citizens present who would like to make comments on municipal services? Okay, we'll move on to officials and staff. City manager. Nothing at this time. City attorney. Nothing, Your Honor, thank you. City clerk. Nothing, Your Honor. Uh, CFO. Nothing, Your Honor. Uh, public safety. Nothing, Your Honor. Uh, public works. City engineer, are you going to give us an update? <laughs> <laughs> Always trying to upstage me. <laughs> I guess just first of all, I just want to thank for the opportunity to work with the city again and serve, serve the people of this community. Um, I guess the last time I stood up here, we talked about an MDQ meeting we had. And um, as a follow up to that, we had another meeting, kind of a technical meeting, and that's been completed. We spent two or three hours with the DEQ going over a lot of the finer details of our work that we've, we've been working on the last several months. So right now we're in the middle of responding to the MDEQ's questions, a lot, of, a lot of questions. There's 30 or 40 of them. We're methodically going through them. We're answering all those and, and getting those back to the MDEQ. Our next major deadline is really in the spring when we have to submit plans and specifications um, re related to the project as well. We finished the pilot project uh, that started earlier this summer, the lining of pipes some manholes and some service leads. That work for the most part is complete. We may do a couple more manholes, but for the most part it's done. And um, you know, one observation that we've made is in one of the districts, uh, a small area, we've completely lined the pipes. I mean, they're, they're as good as new. You know, these pipes will last another 50 plus years, no problem. Um, but there's still some infiltration and so the question is, where is it coming from? And it's coming from basically from homes. And so we knew this. That's why we're going to have storage down at the treatment plant. But it just kind of confirmed one thing is we can take care of a lot of the city's problems. And we, when we, redu and we definitely reduced I&I and, I and eliminate a lot of sources. But um, some houses have footing drains. Some have sump pumps that go into the sanitary sewer. And you know because of that, we're still going to need to have storage at the end of the of the system. And it's something that's a long-term thing the city will have to look at for many decades to come is just working home by home with the plan to eliminate that source of I&I. &I. Um, I think we're going to take care of what's in the streets and we're going to take care of storing it at the plant, but there's still always going to be this private component to your sewer system that will have to be someday addressed. But we'll be, we'll be getting the most important part of it right now. So. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a planning and zoning here? No. 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 Not right. um, council members, Council Member Cooper. Council Member Beaver. Nothing. Mayor Pro Tem. Could we get an update from Sean? Oh, we already have that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing here. Well, one thing I like to say when we're voting on these people that are running for different, do we have somebody up here to at least address who we're voting for? Who? I, th I think, you know, it depends. The, uh, I've had people contact me um, in meet for coffee and, and talk to them. The uh, agenda has their application and, and their stated qualifications and, and desire uh, okay. to, to serve on a board. So I'm, I always check those. We found one last year that was a seasonal resident that wanted to apply for a, a year-round board one every month, and they, they declined appoint that person because they would they would be gone five months out of the year well on the application though it says that you're going to be attending the meeting what's the point of asking that what on the application itself it says are you going to be at the meeting if they're going to be at the meeting or not yeah so i don't know i kind of stuck on that it would be nice just to have you want to call them up in the future okay. we can do that we're just bringing it up to the meeting yeah okay i've got the cards for people who will
Did you have anything else? No. Um, I'd like to thank everybody that, uh, that has come out tonight mm -hmm. and uh, participated in city government. Thank the council members for uh, active participation, city staff. Um, you know, it's always a pleasure to recognize the tenure of, of the city employees. Um, there were a couple of them tonight, 31 year um, tenured employees, and that is, that is truly commendable. The 19 year, uh, 23 year, um, as, as we state in the budget, you know, the, uh, the pride and joy of the city of Manatee is uh, resting in the employees' job day in, day out. So thank you. With that, I take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn.